Hello everybody, welcome back to Wings Wild Wisdom. As uh, so far I have been your host, Zero Yeti. Let's go ahead and get into it. The first day of the week being the greater blue ring octopus, which is one of four species of highly of highly venomous blue ringed octopuses or octopi, uh, belonging to the family Octopolidae, and is widespread throughout tropical and subtropical waters throughout the Indo-West Pacific, from Sri Lanka to the Philippines, from Australia to Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands to Vanuatu. The animal prefers shallow water with a mixed seabed, such as rubble, reefs, sandy areas. Here it lives in a burrow, which often features an entrance that is littered with the remains of previous meals, such as crabs, shrimps, snails, and small fish. Despite its vernacular name, it is it is a small octopus whose size is, does not often exceed more than four inches in length and one half pound in weight. Its common name ref comes to instead refer to the relatively large size of its blue rings, which are larger than those of other members of its genus, and help distinguish it, this type of octopus. These rings, which number around 60, uh, are spread throughout the entirety of its skin and act as a form of a posomatic adornment uh, to display to all potential predators that this octopus is highly venomous. These cephalopods sport two kinds of venom that are secreted in their saliva. One is used to mobilize the hunted crusta uh, hosted crustaceans before eating them. The second, which is a uh, tetrodotoxin, is used for defense and is often found in several other sea creatures such as pufferfish. Tetrodotoxin uh, blocks sodium channels and causes motor motor paralysis uh, and respiratory arrest within minutes of exposure. Interestingly enough, the blue ring octopi don't appear to be able to discern the difference between male and female octopi of their own species, so they often will mate with any other blue ringed octopus they come across. After fertilization, the female will lie between 50 to 100 eggs and will guard them by carrying them under her tentacles until they hatch about 50 days later into platonic para larvae. Unfortunately, as the mother refuses to leave her brood for any length of time, she often ends up starving to death shortly after they hatch, and the average lifespan of the blue ring octopus is just around two years. Next up is the Roosevelt elk, also known commonly as the Olympic elk and Roosevelt's wapati. It stands around five and a half feet tall at the shoulder and weighs upwards of 1,100 pounds. Uh, it is the largest of the four surviving sp subspecies of elk in North America by body mass. Both males and females have dark brown heads and pale brown bodies with large white rump and stubby tail. Males are larger than females and are identifiable by a set of antlers uh, that they wear, that they do adorn during the summer and fall. Its ge geographic range includes much of the temperate rainforest of the Pacific Northwest, ranging from California to as far north as Alaska. Here, the Roosevelt elk typically lives in herds around 20 individuals, being primarily a grazer, uh, and they prefer to eat herbaceous plants such as grasses and sedges. However, when resources are scarce, such as typically in winter, it will feed upon berries, mushrooms, lichens, woody bushes, and even young trees, such as the Douglas fir and the western red cedar. Elk themselves are preyed upon by mountain lions, gray wolves, coyotes, wolverines, and bears. Breeding occurs in the autumn, and the calving season occurs during the spring, during which time mothers will give birth to one to two calves, uh, typically away from the rest of the herd, uh, so that the babies can better remain hidden uh, uh, up until they are able to better run and a uh, better run and be free from predators. The offspring will continue to stay with their mother until the following spring. Uh, these elk become sexually mature around two to three years of age and under ideal conditions of upwards of 20 years. Next up is the eastern long-necked turtle, which is an Australian species of snake-necked turtle that can be found throughout southern Australia, Victoria, the Northern Territory, Queensland, and New South Wales. Here they inhabit a wide variety of water bodies from fast-moving streams and rivers to slow-moving lakes and billabongs, feeding on a variety of prey items including insects, worms, tadpoles, frogs, small fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. They, like other snake-neck turtles, catch their prey using a striking gape action, 
lowering their hyoid bone to decrease water pressure and create a vacuum sucking their prey in. Their broad, flat carapace is typically black or brown in coloration and sports a deep medial groove. In contrast, the plastron is often, which is also very broad, often sports a yellow cream color with sutures edged in black. The neck is long and narrow, typically, uh, which is typical of the subgenus Chelodina, and it reaches a length of approximately 60% of the length of the rest of the body. Like in most turtle species, female eastern longhorn turtles grow larger than males, uh, reaching shell lengths of just over 8, 11 inches. When it feels threatened, uh, these turtles are known to emit an offensive smelling fluid from their musk glands. This is a trait uh, gives the turtle one of its other common nicknames, which is the stinker turtle. Mating season occurs from September to October, and both males and females are more active during this time. Males courting females and females looking for the best nesting site. They may lay up to three clutches of 8 to 24 eggs in a given season, with the incubation period lasting 120 to 150 days. Under ideal conditions, eastern longneck turtles have been known to live upwards of 30 years. Next up is the spotted hyena, also known as the laughing hyena. It is a hyena species uh, currently classed as the only sole extant member of this genus, Procuta. Uh, or Krokuka, uh, is native to sub-Saharan Africa. They stand around three feet tall at the shoulder, with females being slightly heavier than males at around 150 pounds in weight compared to the 120 pounds for males, respectively. Uh, the spotted hyena is the largest known member of the hyenidae family, uh, and it can be easily distinguished from its relatives by its bulkier build, rounder ears, and less prominent mane, as well as the namesake spotted pelt. Spotted hyenas are social animals that can live in large clans of up to 80 individuals. Females are usually dominant, usually dominant over males, including in cases where lower-ranking females generally dominate over high-ranking males. But they will occasionally co-dominate with a male. Cubs can take the rank directly uh, below their mothers at birth, so when the matriarch passes away or a rare is dispersed to another clan, their youngest female cub will take over as the leader. Social organization is unlike that of any other carnivore, uh, carnivorous mammal, bearing closer resemblance to that of primates with respect to group size and hierarchical structure. Um, along with frequency of social interaction among, bo among both kin and unrelated group mates. However, the social system of spot hyena is openly competitive rather than cooperative with access to kills and mating opportunities depending on the ability to dominate other clan members. Also like primates, dominance ranks in hyena societies are not directly correlated with size or aggression, but instead with ally networks. The spotted hyena is by far the most common large carnivore in Africa, with success due in part to its adaptability when hunting, as spotted hyenas have been known to frequently prey upon wildebeest, buffalo, zebra, antelope, gazelle, giraffe, rodents, sheep, goats, cattle, fish, tortoises, lizards, primates, rhino calves, hippo calves, young African elephants, pangolins, and pythons. Additionally, they consume more of the kill than any other carnivores, uh, in their area, including the skin and the bone. There exists a common misconception that hyenas steal the kills from lions, but it is most often the other way around, with lions frequently stealing kills from spotted hyenas. Spotted hyenas breed year-round depending on the resource availability, with mothers giving birth between two and four cubs, which will stay by her side for over a year. Spotted hyenas reach sexual maturity at the age of three years and can live 25 years under ideal conditions. Next up is the blunt head tree snake, also known as the blunt head vine snake, the fiddle string snake, and the Maparia cordier violon. violon is a species of rear fanged, mildly venomous arboreal snake in the family Colubridae. It is native throughout Mexico as well as Central and South America, where it inhabits cooler and moist areas such as flooded woodland and montane rainforests up to 5,600 feet in elevation. Here it can be found nesting in a coiled position in the very shade areas of the, air, of the forest during the day, typically around coffee trees and bromeliads. At night, it forages for food through the dense vegetation, preying upon smaller lizards, frogs, and eggs. Measuring nearly five feet in length, this snake is known for its long, slender body and very large head in proportion. 
Uh, its eyes, which take up over 25% of the skull, are easily recognized for their vertical slits, which are unique among snakes. The coloration is typically comprised of a light or pale brown uh, marked with lateral dark brown patches and a white underbelly. Mating occurs year-round depending on rainfall and weather conditions. And the female snake will typically lay a rather small cluster between one and three eggs, which will hatch after incubating under foliage for about five months. These snakes reach sexual maturity roughly two years of age, and their current maximum lifespan is unknown. Next up is the humpback masseer. It is a species of freshwater rayfin fish from the Indian endemic genus Hypsilvarbus in the carp and minnow family Capronidae. Uh, it's endemic to the western gnats in southern India, where it can be found throughout deeper stretches of clear, fast-flowing water uh, in large jungle streams and rivers or throughout upland areas. An omnivorous species, the humpback mansir feeds upon fruits, algae, aquatic plants, crustaceans, mollusks, smaller fish, and amphibians. The humpback mansir is a laterally compressed body, which is just over a quarter as deep as it is long, the steep dorsal profile forming an obvious hump, which runs down the base of the dorsal fin and then slopes gently away to the caudal fin. Uh, it has a narrow, thick lipped mouth, which is downward facing, and two pairs of short bearer bells behind the mouth. The overall color is either brown or silver, with a paler abdomen, and the fins can range it from a lighter brown to orange, yellow, and even red in coloration. Uh, they can reach well for 8 feet in length and weights in excess of 100 pounds, although these large sizes are fairly rare in recent history. Uh, and despite their size, they are incredibly agile, making them amongst the hardest fighting freshwater sport fish on the continent. Unfortunately, despite its popularity amongst anglers and the general public, pollution and habitat destructions have massively impacted the Mancia population. Uh, with the construction of dams in particular obstructing the species' migration, uh, leading to the species becoming critically endangered and existing only in a few isolated pockets throughout the Kaveri River Basin. Next up is our sea tamal, which is uh, Dromornis palini, formerly a place for the separate genus Buccalo ornis, uh, which is an extinct flightless bird that lived throughout Australia during the Middle Miocene approximately 15 million years ago. The species was first described by, Patrica, uh, by, tri by Patricia Vickers Reich in 17 in 19 sorry in 1979, not 1779, um, and they assigned this to the new genus of Buccalo ornis. The description's first generic epithet was derived from the partial reference to the Bullock Creek site uh, where it was found and the Greek word for the bird ornis as well as the common name for bolt bird proposed by the author for the genus. The type specimen consists of a fossilized section of ripe femur with other materials such as a vertebrae and a rib, also referred to the same species. Later in the 1980s, a near-complete skull would be unearthed. The specific epithet honors the discoverer of the vertebrae fossils, Michael Plain, uh, thus proposed trivial name of Plain's bull bird. Plain had been the first to investigate the Bullock Creek site, and details which were published in a 1968 paper. It was one of the uh, Buccalo ornus was one of several species of Mihi Mi uh the Dimor Dromorthodids, uh, which share ancestry with modern ducks and geese. This bird measured over eight feet and tall and weighed upwards of 550 pounds. Additionally, it was easily recognized by its large, well-built skull equipped with a large beak, which was designed for efficiently cutting materials. This skull design led many scientists to believe the animal was carnivorous, which prompted its iconic nickname of the Demon Duck of Doom. However, it is now believed that while most likely omnivorous, Buccalo ornus more frequently used its unique bill uh, to chop up foliage rather than sheer flesh. In life, it would have been found throughout semi-arid shrublands and riverside dry forests alongside other mirihirungs, horned tortoises, uh, marsupial tapirs, and diprotodonts, and they may have, and buccal ornus may have well been hunted and preyed upon by large reptilians such as Quicana. As always, take care of my guys, gals, non-binary pals. 
uh, happy just life. Bye.